Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 17th, 2020. Well, we had just a brutal and ugly day yesterday, and I can certainly understand everyone feeling pretty glum this morning, but let's try to be positive. Let's uh, grab ourselves something to drink. Settle in and let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So clearly yesterday um, we had an, an, an ugly, ugly day. And it would appear that um, we're not going to be able to buy our way out of this situation. FOMC um, um, cutting rates to zero, um, stepping up with $700 billion in operations, and then added an additional $500 billion yesterday. Didn't seem to dissuade the bears at all. Now, certainly, uh, I'm sure they have a reason for what they're doing. They're trying to support the banks and, and do what they can there because I'm certain there's tremendous devastation beginning to happen on that side of things. But it's it, it, it comes down to um, a situation, you know, uh, where we, we're not going to be able to buy our way out of this situation. Um there's just, until we start seeing an improvement in the virus problem, I just can't envision um, any of these measures really having much impact on the fear that is spreading around the country. And that's really where the big damage is here. It's in that fear. And we can certainly see that fear if we take a look at the VIX. Um, we have reached um, new levels here in the VIX. If I point this out, we have even broken um, and closed above where we were in 2008. Just barely, we're up here reaching that level. Um, as that fear just continues to grow in this market. And it's understandable because we continue to get more and more damaging news uh, from CDC and, and all those things with and now more than 4,200 folks in the United States confirmed have the virus and over 70 folks that have died um, from this. We're starting to get, you know, the CDC is, is telling us to restrict um, um, any activities over 10 people, restaurants, schools, bars, all kinds of things shutting down in response to this, trying to curb this problem. So we are really right at the beginning of some very substantial business impacts. And the thing is, there's not much we can do about it. Now, I'm pretty critical of the FOMC in, in their actions here, but I have to I have to admit and step back here for just a second that, you know, maybe they're just really trying to support the banks in this situation and and preventing um, a financial crisis from occurring but the problem that i have here with what they have done is they have now um, expended the majority of their ammunition um, without knowing the full impacts of this um, what comes next we don't know and will they be able to stimulate the economy to come back when this is over? And that's going to be an interesting question. Or whether or not they they have used up their ammunition way too soon and we end up in a situation where um, we go into a longer term recession because there's not much the FOMC has left that they can do other than printing money, which of course we know they are very willing to do. So we'll see what happens here, but it's it's um, obviously a very damaging situation um, here in the market, and it's extremely different than um, anything we've seen in the past. If we go back to, I'm going to go to uh, just a, uh, a Dow Jones 30 chart and go back to 2008. And if we look at the crash in 2008 that was a financial crisis, you can see that these moves that occurred here, we had breakdowns and rallies and breakdowns, but these took months to occur. We went from 
um, October here in 2007 all the way through over here till about October in 2008 before we had the major capitulation that came in the market. Well, we have um, driven that um, all down all in one uh, one fell swoop. So we're, we're kind of in a new place here in the market seeing such um, tremendous damage in such a quick period of time. And technically it's going to be very very difficult to know what to do here um, when it comes to trading this. The volatility is incredibly uh, violent and uh, we saw more of that incredible violence overnight in the futures market. We were up um, nearly limit up um, in the futures market last night and they ended up giving that all up and now we're showing just slight bullishness this morning um, a gap up um, any any relief back up would is is a wonderful thing to see and you can see we're trying to pop up here this morning in the Dow but um, as we continue these shutdowns across the country and now even affecting polling places where Ohio has closed polling places for the primary, uh, it's really starting to get very real here to uh, Main Street folks. And um, it's somewhat understandable um, the concern that folks are experiencing here um, in the market, not knowing the path forward. So it really is, and this is just my opinion, Opinion, take it for whatever you want you know um, want to do I, I still think it's very prudent for the majority of retail traders to be protecting your capital standing on the sidelines because of this extreme volatility anyone that trades this market has to have a tremendous tolerance for risk and as option traders as for me as primarily an option trader the the prices right now are so incredibly inflated because of the high implied volatility and the bid ask spreads are so wide the slippage is so large attempting to trade in here um, is uh, is a very very dangerous prospect so be very careful out there folks um i i know i know everyone wants to just get back to business and wants to we all want to hope that this is the end of the selling and you know perhaps it is but since we're right at the beginning of this um, nationwide shutdown that we're starting to experience here in the United States, it really is hard to see that path forward. And we we definitely could see more downside um, in this market. So just be really, really careful on how you approach uh, the market. Let's take a look here. Our technicals are just in a shambles. You know, we're so far below the 500 day moving average, it's not even funny. Breaking sharply below even the 2018 uh, sell-off here in the Dow and as you can see we found a little bit of price support in here yesterday trying to hold up right around 200 but that that 200 level could certainly be uh, tested uh, pretty easily so be careful it's also very very possible that we could see those bulls trying to step in and institutions trying to hold things up here a little bit we might be able to get a little bit of a short squeeze rally coming in but um, expect that volatility of the price action to be extremely difficult to trade um, and very very dangerous let's take a look at the spy 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 selling off very strongly. Um, ugly, ugly day here. Uh, we didn't quite make the 2018 lows here in the SPY. That is still certainly a possible target to the downside. But this morning we're getting a little bit of a lift here. And as you can see, we're trying to open just slightly higher here in um, the S&P 500, but it is definitely not a comfortable situation to be looking at. And we're so extremely oversold. We would love to think that, uh, you know, a nice bounce is going to come soon. But one thing, you know, one, one of the things we experienced over here in 2018 was this uh, virtual V type bottom. I kind of wonder if that's going to be an impossible task um, right now. And the reason I say that is because the market's trying to figure out how long this is going to go. And yesterday we heard from the president, some are saying July, August timeframe that these shutdowns could continue to occur. And 
if that is the case, we could see an extended period where we're down here bouncing around in the lows. That that big response by back up may not be for some time now. So even though we're likely going to get these really big knee-jerk whips and and volatility in the market, just remember that we could easily easily be in a situation where we stay depressed here for some time um, in the market as we try to sort through the impacts of um, uh, these business shutdowns. Um, it's it, it's going to be substantial. There's just no way around it. Let's take a look at the queues. QQQ, certainly um, a bearish situation here. We ran down there and touched that 2018. No, excuse me. No, that's not correct. No, we did. Yeah, we touched that 2018 low and broke down through there. Um, but we certainly haven't. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not 2018, 2019. Right in here, that low that we hit right there, um, we touched. But certainly not in a good situation here um, overall. We broke back down below that 500 day moving average. In any um, rally back up, we have to watch all these resistance levels above um, that will stand in our way. And once again, Again, there's just no certainty in the path forward so be really really careful here if we take a look at IWM poor IWM my goodness this thing is so underloved right now um, we gave up the 2018 low and we just kept shooting uh, to the downside yesterday um, pushing us down here, um, approaching a 100 level in the IWM. And that could be a target to seek out those big round numbers. Market likes to, to seek out those numbers. And we'll have to watch that pretty closely. Futures this morning have been all over the place. And we have been up a couple hundred points um, right now at this very instant. And, um, we are Dow futures are only up 38 points. We at one point were up over 280 points. And when I had started this video, we were up 140 points. So expect a tremendous amount of whip here in the market as we just try to sort out what comes next. And that path forward is just absolutely clouded. Now we've already looked at the VIX and certainly um, we want to respect what's going on in the VIX. Fear in this market is extreme. And when we look at the VIX, we want to remember that even if we do get some pullbacks here and some of that fear begins to subside, we have an awful lot of um, support levels here in uh, the VIX where we could continue to bounce around and bounce back up. Could we even go higher? Yes, I think we could um, as the uncertain path forward um, continues to really weigh on uh, the market. Um, as we speak, Dow futures have just gone negative on the day. So we continue to whip around here a lot. Anything is possible um, as we move forward. Let's take a look at T2122. Uh, T2122, I got to tell you, is virtually uh, useless for us um, at the moment. We've been dragging along the bottom here for a long time, and it looks like that is going to continue uh, for a period. We could, uh, T2122 would give us some hope in that we should eventually see a lift up off of here. And if we could get a bit of a sustained rally to the upside, that would be nice. That would It would bring back that um, a pullback on that implied volatility and options and bring that volatility down just a little bit and that could certainly be helpful and and um, really begin to settle the nerves of the market if we could catch a, um, a relief rally of some kind but so far um, pretty difficult to assume that's going to happen um, in the price action that we're seeing. Um, once again, Dow futures are now up 60 points. So we're, we're moving 50 and 60 points um, in uh, moments uh, of time here in the future. So that volatility remains very, very high. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. 
And our economic calendar has a few things on it that we'll want to consider today. If you take a look, we have retail sales coming out here at 8.30 this morning. We have industrial production at 9.15. Both of these would typically be the kind of things that we'd be watching very, very closely for a big potential move in the market or potentially that big move in the market. We're going to have to wait and see what those numbers come out as because um, I'm not sure the market's going to be keying in on those. And and even if they are really good numbers, I'm not sure the market is going to appreciate them all that much in the face of the uncertainty that we have with these shutdowns. So kind of keep that in mind, but we definitely want to pay attention to those occurring. Uh, business inventories, um, housing market index, and the jobs numbers are also going to be very important Um as we move forward, it'll be interesting to see how we react to all of that today. We have about 60 companies reporting earnings th uh, today. And of those 60 companies, we do have a few notables to pay attention to. FDX, FDX reports today, obviously pretty darn depressed here in FDX. And we're looking at a little gap up, but I honestly can't tell you if that, I don't think that has anything to do with the earnings right now. I think it just has a little bit to do with the futures trying to lift us a little bit higher this morning, a little bit of relief. Um, FLR, FLR reporting today, once again, just moving up just ever so slightly this morning, but um, I don't think that's the report. Um, HDS is another company that's reporting today. Um, uh, incredible volatility in this in these stocks it's just amazing it's so hard to trade these the way they're whipping about and um, HDS has certainly experienced that yesterday um, LE lands end a little retailer here um, certainly been um, extremely punished here in this sell-off we'll have to wait and see how that reports today and MIK is the last one I have is sort of a, a notable this morning that we might want to pay attention to to. Other than that, it's going to be um, a very challenging day for us as traders um, and continue to be very challenging. And, and what I wrote in the morning blog today, and by the way, anyone that wants to read the morning blog, there is a link in the description just right below the title. You'll see a link in the description if you want to go over there. But um, I, I mentioned the fact that for most retail traders, um, probably the best course of action is to continue to just stay on the sidelines and avoid this wild volatility because it's going to uh, it's going to require a tremendous tolerance to risk uh, for anything that you do. If you are a stock trader and want to start picking up some stocks that obviously have some amazing values that could be coming into these some of these stocks, you're going to have to be willing to hold through tremendous volatility and big whips to start picking up some of those stock positions. Is it possible? Yes, and I would say if you start doing that, just start picking up partial positions and slowly working your way into some of those value type plays, but just be prepared. Uh, we are probably a long ways away from this volatility dropping out of the market and a little bit of comfort uh, settling in. Um, also, uh, for option traders, it's just uh, the implied volatility is is absolutely at ludicrous levels here and um, the bid ask spreads are so wide trading options right now just extremely dangerous um, both long and short there's not much you can do here unless you're willing to take just tremendous risk um, in your purchases and um, it's going to be very very difficult for a period of time so hang on and just take that breath and realize that days the days will get better as as we progress things will improve and there's going to be a tremendous opportunity when it does but if you happen to give up or if you fight the market during times like this and give up all of your trading capital um, in the, this whippy market you will be so beat up and and um, um, be so capital deprived you may not be able to uh, participate when the market really does begin to recover. So please be careful and protect that capital. And I hate to see people losing money in a, in a market like this. This is just not meant for most retail traders right now. 
So um, with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I truly, truly do. And I know that um, it's it's hard to say that when the market is so difficult here, but be very, very careful with your trading. There are some bright spots out there in the market. Um, yesterday, I mentioned Kroger to, to folks in right way options. Kroger picked up and it really rallied strongly yesterday, pulled back pretty significantly, but you can see it's starting to gap up this morning here. Um, defensive sector stocks like this, grocery stores and things are likely going to hold up here. So there are a few bright spots out there if you're looking for stocks uh, to potentially trade. Um, just be really, really careful and make sure that you're pricing those correctly, if, particularly if you're using options. Take a look at Clorox, um, CLX, um, had a nice day yesterday moving on up. Tremendous volatility in this price action. So remember, anytime you jump into something like this, you're going to have to be willing to hold that volatility. But Clorox looking good and, and they're looking to continue to probably um, hold up well because of the products that they sell. Uh, in sanitizing and things like that, um, uh, looking to improve there. Even saw some moves on like um, Costco yesterday. Costco tried to rally and ended up giving it back, but we might want to keep an eye on stocks like Costco because they've seemed to be getting some benefit of folks out there shopping, stocking up for uh, these extended stays at home. So a few things to, to watch for. Uh, everyone, if, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could do do me a favor if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click those thumbs up buttons and leave a comment. I'm going to keep that part pretty short because I know it's difficult right now in a market like this to feel very excited about much of anything. But hopefully um, these videos have helped you protect your capital and stay a bit on the sidelines. Uh, I, I know you want to get back to work and I know you want to get back to making some money in the market, but there's a time for everything. And right now, the time to stand aside and just protect ourselves uh, seems to be the wise course of action. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome day. I want to wish you all the very best and we'll talk to you all bright and early. Right back here Wednesday morning. Take care.